G'day, my name's John. I'm a tour coach driver here in Perth, Western Australia. I'm lucky. My job gets me to travel around the whole state and see lots of great things, and I'd like to show you some of them as well. So why don't you join me? The story of Fremantle starts right here on Bathers Beach. The ships would park out there in the ocean and then paddle into the beach and land somewhere around here. After all the promises of the great pastoral land, what they saw was the great Australian bush. There are some records to show that the first business to be set up was a pub on the beach. So I guess the first arrivals would get off the boat, see the beach, see the pub, get drunk, go to jail. And up there in the hill behind us, is the first government building to be built in Frio, the Roundhouse. So we're going to take a look around Frio at some of the stories and some of the attractions. This is the old Esplanade Hotel. Before that it was a warehouse and that's where the convicts were housed. Every morning they would be marched from here up the back to a limestone hill where they'd have to build their own prison. This was a working prison from 1856 right through to 1991 when the prisoners tried to burn it down. Now it's been turned into a tourist attraction and they do a heap of really good tours through here. This is the Fremantle Arts Centre. Originally it was built by the convicts to house the criminally insane. Later on it was used for a place where unmarried women would come and have their babies. During the Second World War the Americans took it over and used it for their naval requirements. It's also supposed to be one of the most haunted buildings in Australia. I've got my own personal story but that's another one altogether but uh, I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up, so I'm getting out of here. The Army Museum has been here since 1995, but not many people know about it. The barracks themselves were built here in 1910. The artillery barracks was designed to service the two big gun placements around Fremantle as part of the Fremantle Harbour defences before World War I. From early 1873, Frio Port was a one kilometre long jetty at Bathers Beach. The sailing ships would tie up to this here to load and unload their goods. There are still bits of the old jetty here. To successfully tie up to the jetty, they needed to wait for the southwesterly winds. This was later called the Fremantle Docker. After the jetties was removed, the term slowly changed into what we know today as the Fremantle Doctor. On a stinking hot day before air conditioning, you couldn't wait for the doctor to come in and cool things down, so it made you feel better. The government of the day needed a good civil engineer, and they found an Irishman in New Zealand who was keen to jump at the chance. His name was Charles Yoverton O'Connor, and he would become a very important person in our history. His first project was to build Fremantle Harbour. He drew up the plans not for what he thought they would need at the time, but for what he thought they might need in 200 years. His plan was so outrageous it copped a lot of criticism from the media and also the politicians. They all said it wouldn't work and the river would silt up again. To be able to build the harbour, they would need lots of rocks and wood. They needed a railway line. So for this one project, new towns were opened up throughout the southwest of the state. New rail lines were installed. New industries were started. A whole economy got a kickstart just to build the harbour. The harbour was opened on May 4th, 1897. As you can see, his plan has lasted the test of time. In fact, the only thing that's changed is that they've dredged the river deeper because of the bigger ships. His next project was to get water to run uphill for almost 600 kilometres to Kalgoorlie. 
He again copped a lot of flack, but this time it was too much for him. On a Sunday morning, Charles took his horse and went for his usual ride. But this time he rode it down to a beach south of Fremantle and rode it into the water and shot himself. Six months later, the water came out at Kalgoorlie and we've been using that pipeline ever since. It's a little known fact that during the Second World War, there were more US submarines here in Fremantle than there were in Pearl Harbour. Fremantle was the only safe harbour in the Indian Ocean where Allied ships could come and be repaired or have rest and relaxation. The new Maritime Museum is supposed to look like an upturned boat as you sail up the harbour. It looks at the history off the West Australian coast. It has lots of exhibits in it, including Australia 2, the boat that won the America's Cup, and Perry Banu, the one that John Sanders sailed three times by himself around the world. At the front of the main entrance is these stainless steel walls. It's called the Welcome Wall. If you arrived here after the Second World War on a ship, you could get your name, your ship name, and the year you arrived put on the wall. It was so popular they've had to extend it several times. This Obion class submarine, HMS Ovens, is an ex-Australian sub that now sits where there was a huge repair facility. And this bloke here, he represents all the immigrants that arrived after the Second World War, carrying everything he owns. This is the other museum in town, it's the Shipwreck Museum. This one looks at the early history off the West Australian coastline with all the shipwrecks and artefacts they've found and in particular the Dutch ship Batavia. When you walk around Fremantle you'll notice there's lots of old buildings and that's because back in the 1960s the Lord Mayor came up with a really good idea of not pulling down the old buildings, leaving them for the future. In fact Fremantle is one of the best examples of an early English port outside of England. The Roundhouse was the first government building to be built in 1831, just two years after settlement. Its original purpose was as a jail, but it's had a couple of other uses since. The tunnel was built by the Fremantle Whaling Station. It was built by the prisoners in about five months. The stuff they dug out of it was then used to create a breakwater to protect the ships. If you're down here having lunch and you hear a cannon go off, don't panic, we're not being attacked. It's a tradition that goes way back to the sailing ship days. At one o'clock every day, they shoot a cannon and drop the black ball you can see behind me. And that told all the ships in the bay that it was one o'clock. In 1983, Perth won the America's Cup. This was going to bring the attention of the world onto the sleepy little fishing suburb of Fremantle. So a massive rebuilding project was undertaken to bring it up to world standards. There weren't any real high-class hotels in Frio and this hotel needed a major remake. Rather than pull it down, they extended it and built it to the exact same style. You wouldn't know that there was almost 100 years between the two sides. The next big works project was to make somewhere that all the world's syndicates could be housed, so the new Fisherman's Harbour was born. But with all the money being spent here, there were concerns about what was going to happen to Frio after the Cup. So what's on offer here? Well first and foremost there's the world famous fish and chips. I've had a lot of people ask me where to get the best fish and chips from. I've got my favourite but you can't really go too far wrong no matter where you go. During summer there's nothing better than coming down here for dinner after a hot day to enjoy a great meal in an amazing atmosphere. Fish and chips is such a big thing down here, it forced McDonald's, who used to be on the corner here, to move out because they couldn't compete. It was a bit of a shame because the cheap ice creams are always a big hit with the kids after fish and chips. If you're not into fish and chips, you should be able to find something of interest in the cappuccino strip, which has heaps of different types of restaurants. On the weekends, you've got the markets which are always busy. 
the Australia's oldest continuing running market open since 1897. And there's also the e-shed markets and they're great for souvenirs. A lot of people will either come down from Perth on the boat and go back on the train or the other way around. The boat itself takes an hour and 15 minutes and they do a pretty good commentary on the way. The train will take about 30 minutes. The port itself? It's because of this that Frio is what it is today. It's mostly a container port. Anything that goes in and out of WA in a container will go through here. Thousands of cars will come through here every week and a few live sheep ships will leave as well. And there is a very, very busy cruise ship season. There's always plenty of activity going on. Well, that's it for Fremantle. There's heaps more to do down here, so why don't you take some time out and come down and have a look for yourself. In the meantime, I can smell the fish and chips and it's lunchtime. See you later.